so for the six or seven people who actually watch the videos, um, this past week has been pretty good as far as what I found out about myself. Um, one thing is that I have to have some type of protein shake really early in the morning before I ever really do anything to hang on to protect my stomach uh, because when I'm drinking coffee on an empty stomach it's making me have uh, heartburn when I go out for my walk so I drink my protein shake and which incidentally I make with coffee you know I'm an addict and I take my one mint flavored Zantac the mint I really like the mint coating on it because I hate taking pills so I take that and it seems to help having the protein shake first and not having the coffee on the empty stomach I'm trying to whittle back how much coffee I drink since it's clearly causing um, heartburn so this is my favorite shirt in the world Walmart five bucks people read it and then they look at me like oh yeah you're tapped out yeah so um, today's Saturday I'm going for another long walk today I did a run yesterday walk run yesterday and I ran a lot and uh, you know I'm just alternating that day by day um, I had a lot of stress a lot of stress this week and um, I'm not able to sleep without taking the Xanax. So I started taking it again because I was having a whole lot of problems. Um, what I found is that now my anxiety is so bad during the day. I mean, there's, I'm just not handling my anxiety very well. Um, not well at all. It's, I'm allowing myself to be anxious about everything. Here's some of the things. We had my son's graduation rehearsal, which was in a part of town that I'm unfamiliar with, a quote-unquote bad part of town. And although it was a very nice place, and there was not a problem with it, but people perceive this to be a bad part of town. Um, or at least that's what I've been told since, since I've been here. So we had that, and it was very stringent. You must be here at this time or you don't graduate. And that's what we've been up against for months with high school graduation. So we managed to make, make it through that. Um, I'd had two weeks where I had to pick up my younger son, my son who has autism from school every day because he could not ride the bus home because of the air conditioning in the bus. It was so loud it was bothering him. Hush, hush. Okay, so I got the... I had to come outside because my dog was barking like a maniac. So we finally got through graduation rehearsal. And then graduation was the next day. And that was very stressful for me. I was afraid I was going to cry. My face gets really horrible when I cry. Turned out that the people were so loud at the graduation and they so disrespected the idea of what a uh, graduation ceremony was going to be like. It was more like the shouting that you would hear in a sports stadium. People going down to take photography in the aisles without any pretense of trying to do it in a non-obstructive way. So the people who were actually sitting down watching the ceremony ended up not being able to see anything. And I, you know, so I didn't have to worry about crying because I was too pissed off to cry. But he did graduate and we were able to get through all of that. Uh, and I thought, oh, my stress can let up now and, and I can not be quite so hampered by the stress. Okay, so the next morning, we're getting the last kid off for school, two kids no longer going to school, uh, one kid going, and the two dogs started fighting. The little dog instigated a fight by taking the big dog's Kong treat and uh, teasing her with it and the big dog bit the little dog in a fight and I was in the bathroom at the time and I heard the fight and my daughter my 12 year old daughter was in the room with the dogs and I'm struggling to get out of the bathroom you know and, and ran out and here she is between these two dogs that are just like 
a big blur of black fur whirling around the room, growling, teeth snapping, and um, she's in the middle between them, pushing them apart. So I grabbed her book bag and I started smacking at the dogs and got them to let go of each other and crated the big one and then picked up the little one. She had a bite on her shoulder. Um, so the better part of the day was spent trying to figure out what to do about this. This is the second time we've had this happen. Little dog instigates a fight, big dog retaliates or, or becomes involved, little dog gets hurt. We just can't have two dogs. The problem is we love both dogs. Okay, the problem is I love both dogs. All four people in the family, other than me, want to get rid of the little dog and keep the big dog. I like both of them, but I see more of a problem with big dog because I'm the one out walking big dog and you know I can't even hardly walk her down the road. If she sees another animal, she is just barking, growling, snapping, lunging at the end of the leash, you know, and it's hard for me to even walk her. Um, after the fight, at one point she rolls over on the floor and this is the one that I just got her spayed and I notice that she's got a swelling under the skin where her spay was, that would have been uh, seven days ago, where her spay was, that looks like somebody stuffed a juice box under the skin. Apparently it's called a seroma uh, or a hematoma or, or something like that. And the vet is not open until Monday. If I take her to the emergency vet, it is bleh, expensive. They said watch it if it starts to weep or if she starts to lick it, get her into an emergency vet, but she ought to be okay to wait until Monday. I'll tell you what, stress like crazy. Trying to keep two dogs separated. Um, little dog is on antibiotics and anti-inflammatories. She has a weeping wound from her shoulder. Um, we had her in the crate and you know, we've been keeping them both crated separately. It is so loud because they're barking and they're whining and 17 year, 16 year old kid with autism screams and shrieks every time the dogs whine or bark. It is a cacophony. It is insane. So anyway, I'm going out for my walk this morning. Um, I did find out that the halfway point of my walk at which I had added a whole bunch more walking to it um, and a lot of it on roads that don't have sidewalks. So I've been kind of dicey about that, feeling like that was kind of chancy to walk on that area. Um, finding out that that doesn't really add anything to my walk at all. In fact, at the halfway point, if I turn around and come back exactly the same way as I walked, I get more mileage than if I do that whole other walk around thing. So um, the perception for me with the back and forth walk is that it's actually shorter than the the big long walk that I'd done, the big circular walk that I'd done. So that made me feel a little bit better. Um, I'm changing what I listen to. I'm trying to listen to something on my um, on my phone through my Bluetooth that is not going to stress me out as much as what I had been listening to. Hiker accounts of um, walking the Appalachian Trail which kind of made me feel like that I should be doing more than I'm doing, that there are these people out here who move mountains and stuff like that, or at least walk over them. And, and also listening to the sheer unsurmountableness of the Appalachian Trail that, you know, I thought, oh, wouldn't that be cool to do? And listening to people whose feet turn into hamburger and blow out knees and stuff like that. Um, it's almost like when I listen to these things on my on my phone that I'm reliving it. So I, I'm going back to listening to more um, to things on my phone that allow me to keep a cadence but that don't stress me out. Um, Maya Angelou, I've been listening to her books and uh, listening to the New Testament and the Bible again and just, you know, kind of trying to change it up with things that are not going to make me crazy. Um, the Napoleon Hill stuff, you know, I'd posted some of that on my Facebook and I'd been listening to that. And I don't, I'm not listening to that anymore because if you really get into it and listen to it, what I found is it says, a lot of it says, 
Um, you know, he doesn't believe in the Bible. He doesn't really, he believes that there is a God, but he doesn't really believe in Jesus Christ uh, as the Son of God and God the Son. And, um, you know, it, not listening to that anymore, um, I cannot make that match up with what I personally believe about God. So that was stressing me out. Um, you know, I'm trying to look at my life in terms of the oh shit moments in my life. And yeah, I believe in God, but I swear a lot. Sorry. That's just me. So I'm, I'm thinking about these oh shit moments and I'm trying to pin them down. Not only pin them down, but write them down. Um, I went to put out the dog and the dog barked on the leash and I got this rush of panic where I thought, oh my God, the neighbors are going to call the police. So I pin this down and write it down because number one, the neighbors aren't going to call the police when the dog barks once or twice and I get out there pretty quick. There's no need to panic over this. So, you know, that's kind of what I'm trying to do. Rather than just experience this free-floating anxiety all the time, I'm trying to figure out what the triggers are so that I can do some good self-talk to myself and remind myself that I don't have to panic about every stinking thing in life. So we went to the graduation. I knew what dress I was going to wear, and this is weird because I never dress up, you know, because shirt, you know. Um, and I was afraid that I wouldn't fit into it because my weight has been very stagnant in the last couple of months. But I did fit into it much better than when I bought it back in April, and it had room in it. In fact, I think that I probably uh, won't fit into it, you know, if I continue to have small body changes for the next couple of months, you know, I'll probably put it on next year and, it'll, and I'll be floating in it. <laughs> Hope. So that was good. I felt good going to this thing. They had um, seating that was like 100 and it looked like a hundred year old seating and these old, old, old chairs. Boy, were they small and I didn't touch the sides on either side, but there were a lot of people around me who were going, I can't cram myself into this. And many of them were people who were much smaller than I, much smaller than I was when I was as big before I had surgery as, as I've ever been. So that was a good thing. So I'm counting the non-scale victories, trying to walk every day, taking a couple of rest days a week so I don't you know, you got to have some time off. And, uh, you know, just trying to make sure I stretch out every day. I pushed it yesterday with doing a lot of running. And I had thigh, upper, behind the thigh, the back of the thigh cramps last night. So, you know, I'm trying to be more careful. Next week is a big week. Boy, it's a long video. Next week is a long week because we're taking a trip back to our hometown to see my son, daughter-in-law, two grandkids, my sister, and, you know, I'm just finding that, you know, that whole fear, anxiety thing building again, and it's all centered around what's going to happen here. I really can't do seat of the pants things, so I have to plan everything out and try and worry about every contingency and and what I keep finding is that the shit that I worry about isn't the stuff that happens it's the stuff that it never even entered my mind the dogs fighting you know the the car not starting these which happen um, these are the things that come out and get me and my memory still I'm still having a really hard time with my memory and times of being dizzy. Um, I don't know exactly what's going on with that, but you know, I really probably got to get that checked out. Xanax, yeah, it's probably the Xanax. Um, prayers.